Hey, how's it going, man? Good. How are you doing? Doing all right. Hey, appreciate you taking the time to come talk to me. And uh, uh, to be blatantly honest with you, you're the first, uh, I guess you call it face-to-face -face interview I've ever done. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely appreciate it. For sure. I uh, appreciate your time. Of course, man. Hey, anytime. So uh, obviously, like I said, so we got uh, Howie DeSavino. Did I say that right? Yes. All right, perfect. I'm usually pretty good with last names, especially if it's uh, not, you know, Smith or poor, you know, something similar. Right, right. So, uh, I'm usually pretty good at it. Just wanted to make sure. But, um, you know, so obviously I'm aware of who you are. I've noticed your name kind of coming through Xfinity with Alpha Prime a couple times so far this season. And mm -hmm. driving the Chevrolet, you've been in the, the 44 and the 45 so far. Um, you know, so, I'm not, I don't know too, too terribly much about you. You obviously knew up and comer. You ran, what was it? Four or five truck races for Jordan Anderson last year. Yep. Four or right. five races. Perfect. Uh, so just give uh, both myself as well as uh, <clears throat> viewers and everybody uh, a little rundown, a little intro on, you know, who you are and kind of where you came from. Yeah, for sure. You know, I grew up in Chesterfield, Virginia. Uh, that rings a bell for a lot of people that uh, when I say Chesterfield, because that's where Denny Hamlin grew up. Uh, I basically took the exact same steps that he took growing up. Uh, I did not go kart race. I started when I was late. I started when I was 13 years old in arena racing. And now that does not exist anymore, unfortunately, and moved straight to late models. Uh, but, you know, even before the racing days, uh, when I was four years old, we moved to a 90 acre uh, farm and I grew up farming pretty much my whole life, driving tractors and four wheelers, dirt bikes, uh, side by side. So really anything that you could think about, you know, I drove. So uh, just with that being said, you know, I, I fell in love with racing around age eight years old and uh, wanted to try it out. And after four years of begging my parents to get into a race car, I finally got into a race car. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of my that's, that's how I kind of grew up, you know, uh, was, you know, good old country boy from Chester, Virginia. And then now, you know, making our way through the Xfinity series and the NASCAR series as it is. Right on, man. Do you have any uh, specific drivers you kind of looked up to being younger or any, uh, you know, was it yeah. a specific one or multiple or? Well, you know, obviously from me being from Chesterfield, you have to respect Denny Hamlin. Uh, definitely. I, de I definitely did respect him, but my favorite driver was Dale Jr., which I got to compete against at Martinsville in the spring. So um, that, was, that was pretty awesome. And it was pretty awesome to figure out that I outqualified him as well. Um you know, when we showed up there. So, you know, racing side by side with a guy that, you know, you grew up racing your whole life and, and, you know, we all saw him retire and that was before, you know, I was even in, you know, and that was even before I even made my ARCA start. So uh, be, to be able to race against him, I was very, very blessed and fortunate for that. Very nice. Very good, man. I mean, so like, it, like even you said, you had run a few races with Jordan Anderson racing. Uh, I know you had a little bit in the ARCA and uh, mm -hmm. the West here. So what uh, what brought about the partnership with uh, Jordan Anderson and, and getting into that three truck? Yeah, you know, uh, I, my manager, Austin Terrio, he's a 2017 ARCA champion. Mm -hmm. um, he takes care of my whole career. So he, he, he decides what team we're going to go with and how many races we're going to do. Uh, what the budget is, you know, all, all sorts of stuff like that. So, you know, uh, Austin said, Hey, you know, we have a few truck teams that we're looking at right now. And we, he, he chose Jordan Anderson and, and you know, I couldn't be happier because that was a, that was a really good uh, truck for us to be in. You know, we showed speed uh, consistently. And on top of that, you know, we had really good finishes. So um, that, that was a, that was by far one of the best relationships that I've had with the team you know, uh, you know, showing up and, and, and being able to just, you know, haul it. Yeah. You're not, you're not the first person I've heard say that a lot of people have nothing but good things to say, to say about Jordan and, and this whole organization mm -hmm. that's got there, uh, right. you know, especially seeing him coming up into Xfinity over the last couple of seasons. So, so that's really cool to, to hear that again. And from somebody, somebody else as well. Um, you know, like you said, Chesterfield, Virginia, what, uh, what would you consider your, uh, home track so to speak would you consider that more Richmond or, or Martinsville or or was yeah. it that kind of jumps out a little more than that even I mean I would consider both you know uh if Fair you're right. from Virginia you're from Virginia yeah so it, it, it's kind of like you know if you're from Arizona yeah, that's a big state you know it, and you can say Phoenix is your home track mm -hmm. um I think Richmond's more 
my home track just because it's, it's 45 minutes away from my house. Um, but I, I still go into Martinsville thinking it, it's, it's a home, it's a home race. Fair enough. So definitely. So you, uh, you know, obviously kind of going a little more, uh, probably not something you're, you're, you'd ever be asked very often, but what's it like to get that first opportunity in that Xfinity car at Richmond and then not qualify DNQ'd on that one? What does that do? Yeah. Does it have like a, a negative effect or you just go and yeah, we'll do it again next time? Yeah, you know, uh, with with stepping up to a new series and, you know, not knowing how the car is going to drive and, and we only get 20 minutes of practice, mm-hmm. right? So for the first 20 minutes, which was my whole practice, I was like, I don't even understand the car yet, right? And so we go into qualifying. I underdrove it like crazy. And I, I'll, I'll be the first one to, to say that, you know, the guys brought a fast car. They really did. It just, I wasn't on point. And seeing that my name was in the DNQ list, um, that breaks my heart. You know, it, it, it really, it, it took a, it took a big toll on me, uh, that weekend. And, you know, I got texted by a bunch of guys, you know, uh, Spencer Boy, Josh Blakey and all those guys. And they said, Hey, you know, uh, we, I failed to do many races, you know, and not qualify in. So don't, don't, you know, don't think about it as a negative way, you know, just we're going to Martinsville next week, just pick it up and, 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 and do what you want there. So going to Martinsville week, you know, I mean, I, I at this point, I got to get revenge for what I did at uh, revenge on myself Yeah. And from what I did at Richmond. So yeah, I went out yeah, there and tell a lap, you know, that that's just the way it is. I mean, it sucks. It really does. I mean, it, it, it's the most gut wrenching feeling ever because you, you sit there, you, you, you spend all the time on the sim, you spend all the time talking about it with your coaches, you spend all the time, you know, talking to the team about it. And then, you know, the biggest thing is, you know, I let myself down and also let the, the team down. That makes sense, man. Definitely makes sense. And then how does it feel to, co- to go from that, which would be a, obviously a low point to going to Virginia, going to Martinsville again, another, like you kind of said, home track kind of equal there and qualifying and getting into the show. I know you already put in uh, talking about Dale jr. But, and then obviously you went out and out qualified jr, which is pretty impressive. I don't care who you are. And, uh, you know, how does, how does that correlate? I mean, do you get that like a really big high or a rush or you, did you feel redemptive redemption? I guess is a good, uh, good question. Right. Uh, I mean, when I, I went out there for qualifying and, you know, as soon as I, as soon as I ran that second lap, I was like, guys, I, I stuffed it in there pretty good. And I was like, well, I don't know if that was the most stellar lap. And I said that right on the radio. Mm-hmm. And then Tommy comes on the radio and he says, you're P1 right now. So I was like, Oh, Okay, that's cool. Um, then I hop out of my car, and you know, by this time I get out of my car, three cars have, have gone. I'm still sitting P1. For the longest time, we were sitting P1, which was awesome. At least it felt like for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And then you know, the the fat the fast guy started to go, and then they were knocking me back a little bit. But I was like, I'm in the show. I I, I already know I'm in the show because I, I I went like 13th out, and I qualified first, so I'm already in the show. But, you know, it was just a, it's a surreal moment. It's a redemption. It makes you feel good about yourself uh, in every aspect. Right on, man. And obviously qualifying in, you're in the show. What were your, did you, did you have any expectations or, or self goals or anything? Or were you just, what were you looking to accomplish in that race or hoping to accomplish? Well, we knew we had a fast car. So with, with having a fast car, you know, you can always put something on like, oh, I want a top 20, or I want a top 25. My goal was to finish the race. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously in that race, my drive shaft blew through the um, cockpit and um, on lap 37. So we didn't get a full race. So then you go from having the highs of highs, right? Right back down to the lows of lows. I mean, it, it you, I came off the corner and I just heard a big boom. And then I was, I, you could just see and hear that the drive shaft just was not there. Right. And so I don't know, it, it, it's weird because it was such a freak accident. You know, I, that was the same car I took to Richmond. It was the exact same car, same chassis, everything. And then we go out to Martinsville, we you know, we, we, we had 20 minute practice at Richmond qualifying 20 minutes at Martinsville qualifying, and then it blows up 38 laps to the race. So that's, that's kind of the deal that, you know, we dealt with there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was definitely a, uh, one of those feelings to where you're like, oh man, I really feel good about this. And then, you know, you go right back down. 
Hey, that's, I get, I get it. Trust me. I do uh, definitely get that. So, I mean, you, you go on from there 17th at New Hampshire. So that's, that's a very impressive run, especially for being, you know, definitely not, you're not in this series full time. You're not running what everyday run of the mill fans would think of as tier one equipment. You're not in a JRM car or a JGR car. You're out there. You still finish 17th at New Hampshire. That's really impressive. What was that like to you? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, when we came across the check the flag, we were P19, then two cars got to qual- uh, disqualified up front. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it can only get better from there, right? And so we ended up 17. Um, but my best finish in a Jordan Anderson truck was 22nd. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a career best finish in a, in a league that's one up, right? And just like you said, in a, in a car that, you know, most people would say is not top tier. So that's kind of how we, we really built off of that. And we were excited to, you know, go to, to Dega. Oh, I'm sorry, Kansas and then Dega, because we knew that we had a fast car. Um, but it, it, that was, that was a good feeling for us, you know, to finish all the laps, you know, we made the right adjustments. The, the, the car was coming to us the whole time. And as I tell everyone, you know, the first stage was just me learning the track. That's my practice. And then second stage and third stage, you go racing. Right on, right on. So obviously we're going back to Martinsville. This will be your second time there. Uh, do you have any, any other goals that you, you know, you got 30, just under 40 laps of experience there the first time, but do you have any loftier goals or expectations this time than the last time, or are you going in yeah, you, the same mindset? You know, uh, get past lap 40. Um, that's one. Uh, and then, you know, more of the fact of just finishing the race. Cause we, we already know it, it's going to be a crazy race already. You know, you got people that are trying to get top 20 and points. We have people, we have two drivers that are trying to get into to the um, championship four. So we already know that it's going to be a, a bunch of wrecks. We already know that, you know, it's just, it's, it's going to be one of those races to where, you know, you got to be there to the end. Don't get caught up in stuff. If you go a lap down early, great. You, you can get, you can get a wave around or a lucky dog. So that's kind of the, I, I would say that that's more of the plan is, you know, it, everything's a strategy now. We're not top 20 points. Well, we, well, we're in the top 20, but you know, we're not like close to fighting for it. So I'm not going to be battling guys that are just going to be, you know, knocking my door off, you know, shoving their, their nose into mine, you know, just because they want to get in front of me, you know, especially when the leaders are coming, be respectful, get out of their way. Cause you know that they're racing for, you know, a championship uh, at the final week, you know? So uh, that's kind of our plan going, going into it. And like I said, it, I mean, I would be shocked if we don't have a bunch of wrecks there. Keep that one noted. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm on your side on that one. I'm going to be pretty shocked uh, no matter what. Um, you know, so you had him on your truck or truck. You had him on the car at Talladega. Tell me a little bit about the uh, Travis Mills Foundation that you got on the, on the 45 this weekend. Yeah, for sure. You know, for a lot of people that don't know what the Travis Mills Foundation is, Travis Mills um, was overseas and unfortunately got hit by a bomb and lost all of his um arms and legs so he decided to start up a foundation to recalibrate wounded uh, warriors and you know whether that's ptsd whether you're just going through a hard time you know you 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 got blown up whatever the the deal is you know he's there for you and and he's he's very very big in the uh community especially you know the community that uh i grew up in you know my my grandfather he was both my grandfathers they were actually in the the, uh, navy and army and my dad was in the army as well so i i have a lot of respect for that man and uh so that's that's why i think that it's such a good cause for us to have them on on the car very good man i i can definitely appreciate that too i I graduated in 2010 i got a few buddies that went over went overseas a couple of them got hurt a couple of them just have the that the mental issues behind them with ptsd or even mm-hmm. if they don't want to admit it or anything like that, that's something that right. I, I take pretty seriously too. So if you have any like links or anything to, to any of that, I'd really appreciate it. If you shot that over, I'd love to put it over on the website and try and see if we can't help those guys out. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll uh, I, I believe it's just the Travis Mills foundation.com, but okay. I'll, I'll double check on that. Perfect. I, I, I'll, I'll shoot you an email. 
Perfect. I appreciate that. And then, uh, you know, what uh, do you, I know you said you work with, uh, man, I'm brain farting here. <laughs> I know you said you, you work with a couple, with a, with a group. Uh, what's, do you go out after looking for sponsors for, for races or is that something that uh, your management team does or is it kind of 50 <laughs> 50 or a little bit of both or? Um, that's a hundred percent on me. Okay. Actually, um, you know, uh, I, I, I like to say about myself, you know, I'm not like most of the the kids that race now, right? You, you know, I don't have the the daddy's money behind me, the grandfather's money. You know, I, I'm, I'm a lot like a Spencer Boyd or, you know, Ryan Vargas who has to go out there and find their partners and, you know, uh, make sure that they have a great experience, you know, all that, you know, and I think that that's more rewarding when you can get a, a partner that wants to partner up with you. And then you, you, you know, you can, you can kind of just say, Hey, you know, thank you so much. It, it's more respected. Right. So uh, that's my job. I do have a team that works with me on it, but you know, with the leads and stuff like, like that, you know um, it's more generated towards my, my part. And, and, you know, I have someone that calls and I call email, you know, all sorts of stuff. All right. Makes sense. Is that it, so? This is this is a topic that I've always kind of had a little fascination with because, like you said, there's a lot of guys that come out with they got daddy's money. They say, "Well, daddy, I want to go drive a race car," and dad whips out a checkbook. And, right. You know, we we know a lot of those a lot of those drivers. A lot of them go out and let's be honest, they fizzle out and they only perform decent because they're in buying great cars. And then you get guys who you know, they, they buy their spot and they go out and they're in contention. They go out and get wins. They get wins in the cup series. You know, mm -hmm. how does that, you know, affect you, whether it's emotionally or anything like that, knowing that you've got to sit there and fight while other people are out there. Does it give you that little extra drive to go and prove I'm here. I want to do this and I'm better than that guy. Not at all, actually, you know, cause it, I always say, you know, if I put myself in their shoes, I would love for someone to write me a check. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I would go racing. A hundred percent. I I would go racing. It's just, you know, I mean, I, I've, our family has been through a lot of struggles already, you know, with, with, you know, the racing with my mom's passing, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So with that being said, you, you know, it, it's more re rewarding for me to go ahead and, and find a partner and, you know, I represent, I, I represent someone else. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, it, it gives me more of a drive to go out there and perform better. Right. Hey, that trust me, that makes perfect sense because this whole seriously fast media thing that I do, I do it 100% self funded. I made it to Mid Ohio to the truck race this earlier this season. I got my first official credentials to cover a cup race and Xfinity race at Michigan this year. It, those are the only races I've been able to do because it's self funded. So I get it right. 100%. I'm trying to go out and find a partner, somebody that would be willing to, to pitch in and help me live out my dream just like you are. And that uh, that resonates big time, definitely. For does. sure. Um, you know, are you, are you looking actively into starting anything next year at next season, or are you just kind of trying to finish up this season in terms of trying to find those partners or do you even have yeah, any, you, any conversations at all yet? I mean, conversations that were, are more based towards next year. Okay. You know, uh, I mean, we're, <laughs> we're racing in, in four days. Um, so it's, the car is already wrapped, you know, it, it, we, 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 I mean, we could add something to it, but it would just be easier just to go ahead and, and, and lock down those races for next year. Right. Makes sense. Do you have any plans for next year? Anything uh, potentially full-time, whether that be truck or Xfinity or more than just five races, or is it based solely on that, you know, getting those partners? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's one of those deals to where it's, it's fully on the, the, the partners, but on top of that, you know, right now we're, we're looking into every opportunity, every option. Right on. That makes sense. Definitely appreciate that answer. Um, what do you, and, you know, I, I know what you said, you told the young lady told me you got an hour, um, try and cut this out a little short, let you do what you got to do. But, uh, kind of last question here, what, what are your ultimate career goals in, in motorsports, whether that be to stick with NASCAR, whether that be to potentially move on and do multiple things, or do you, where do you, where do you see yourself moving on to, whether that be two years, five years, 10 years? You know, I, I believe everyone's goal is to be a full-time cup series driver mm -hmm. and that, and that's my goal. That, that really is that, that's my goal, but I want to be able to be one of those, those guys to where, you know, I'm in a mid tier car mm -hmm. and I'll perform it and then move into a, uh, 
uh, you know, a top tier car and, you know, go out for championships and go out for, for wins. But, you know, like I said, that's all based off of, you know, how much money you have. So, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, just stay, I want to stay, you know, present in the sport and people know who I am and they know that I'm a good race car driver or, you know, however they feel about me, they, they might not even like me and that's fine. But, you know, it, it's just one of those deals to where I want, I want people to know who I am and I would love to run full seasons. I would absolutely love that. Um, but, you know, like I said, you know, you, you, every day is a hustle. You, you have to hustle, hustle, hustle. Um, and, and that's one thing, you know, work, work, if you work really, really hard, it will happen. So that, that, that's just the way I feel about everything. Right. I'm going to definitely, another answer I can definitely appreciate. Um, you know, let me put one more thing in. I, I obviously with Alpha Prime, a bunch of good guys, a bunch of names that people might not even associate in terms of ownership and driving over there. Uh, a little bit of everybody kind of spirit in there. What's your experience with Alpha Prime? I've, uh, I've asked them some questions over the last couple of months in terms of writing my articles and stuff. And I've gotten some pretty real quick responses. The team's usually got some fantastic uh, paint schemes and some really unique stuff. What's your experience with those guys? Yeah. You know, well, Hey, we do have really good paint schemes. I will, I will agree to that. We really do. Especially uh, the Martinsville 45 car looks really good this uh, upcoming weekend. You know, it's a little, it's a little patriotic, you know, it looks good. Um, you know, great guys over there, great guys, you know, uh, everyone over there, they, they, they care. And, you know, you walk in, in, in the shop, they're busting jokes, you know, you can have a good time with them. You can sit down, have lunch, you know, joke with them. So, uh, good. It's a good, uh, it's a good opportunity. Perfect. Right on, man. Well, Hey, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate the time uh, today. Uh, thanks for answering the questions and kind of sticking up, putting up with, like I said, this being my first kind of face, <laughs> sit down face to face. Uh, ho I hope to, you know, see you at the racetrack one of these days, man. Actually meet you in person, shake your hand, and uh, hopefully that'll be a full-time ride. I get to say what's up to you. For sure. And just let me know what, when this comes out, and, um, you know, I'll, I'll go in and repost the links. Perfect. I, I'll try and uh, I'll try and do a couple things, uh, whether that be just the link, the, the video, and then, uh, you know, maybe write a couple things on it. Definitely find you be an interesting dude, man. I appreciate a lot of your answers. Some real-world, down-to-earth uh you know answers that you wouldn't get out of you know some of these other guys it's like right you know, growing up in uh a farming town you know working on a farm that uh that one right there i it kind of makes me laugh we uh i post a video on tiktok i did the tiktok for a minute there and uh a lot of people say oh well you know you get these these young up and coming kids they got money they got this they've never worked on a on a car. They don't want to work on a car. They did, you know, Dale Earnhardt grew up on a farm and worked on farm equipment and knows how to do this. And I'm like, those guys are out there. You, you got to look for them, which right. is the reasons that when uh, Taylor gave me the opportunity to talk to you, I, I, I knew a couple of things about your background, not a, not a ton. So as soon as she said that, I'm like, done. Yes, I'll take it. Let's do it. No. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's crazy. Cause you know, I, I can resonate back to when my, my pops and I, we were out and it was like midwinter. Mm-hmm. My mom wanted to get some sort of animal, and I mean, you know how it is. She doesn't ask. She go. She goes and gets them, and we have to make an acre fence within 24 hours. So you know, me being like at this point five or six, <laughs> I mean, it was midwinter. We were literally taking the post hole digger, just posting them in the ground, you know um <laughs> we've done some crazy stuff uh I'll, I'll tell you that you know growing up on, on a farm i would recommend anyone to do that you learn you know work ethic you you learn how to be patient even though sometimes my patience is is not the best but you know you you learn how to work heavy equipment uh you know it's just it, it's something all around that i think you know if, if people people would respect uh <laughs> what farmers do a lot more if they've been through it. So, uh, you know, it, to me, it's, it's great experience and I would never bring that into the NASCAR career and say, Oh, well, I, I deserve a spot cause I was a farmer. Right? right. But that was just my, my growing up, you know, and I, and I love it. And, you know, I, after Martinsville, I'm going right back up there to help my dad out. And on top of that, it's hunting season. So we'll be, uh, we'll be out there. There you go. Well, I hope you get to help you get your good one there. And then obviously good luck at, at Martinsville and, uh, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye out to uh, get the newborn on my shoulder and keep an eye out for that 45 car this weekend, man. Awesome. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. And thank you for having me on. 
appreciate it. Thank you for your time, man. Good luck. And have Thank, a good you. Time. Thank you. All right. Have a good bye.